Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Williams. I'm the CEO of New Pacific Metals, a company that's discovering and developing world-class precious metals deposits in Bolivia. So our company uh, currently has three projects under our control. The, our most advanced and flagship project is our Silver Sand, located on the left part of the screen. Uh, Silver Sand is the project that brought us to Bolivia uh, about six years ago and has become one of the best primary silver discoveries that's been made anywhere in the world. And we're continuing to rapidly advance the Silver Sand project uh, to shovel ready status. So a year ago, we released our PEA study highlighting a 171 million ounces of life of mine production profile at roughly $10 an ounce all in sustaining cost and yielding a post tax net present value of $726 million and a 39% IRR and really importantly, a sub two year payback period on the capital. Silver Sand is a remarkable project and we're continuing to advance it this year, uh, moving towards our pre-feasibility study that I'll touch on a little bit later. And if Silver Sand wasn't a tough enough act to follow, our company a couple years ago made a second major discovery, also in Bolivia, at our Carangas project. And that's the one that's located in the middle of, this, uh, of the slide. And in September of last year, we released our inaugural resource estimate at Carangas, outlining a massive system, total indicated resources of 560 million silver equivalent ounces and another 110 million ounces in the inferred category. And importantly, that's all within a, a pitch shell at a roughly 1.8 to one strip ratio. And we've also got some very favorable preliminary metallurgical test results at Carangas supporting the project. So as if Silver Sand wasn't a tough enough act to follow, we certainly think we've done it with our Carangas project. And last but not least, we do have a third project on the right side of the slide, that's Silver Strike. Uh, it's our least advanced, but nonetheless highly prospective. We completed a scout drilling program in 2022 at Silver Strike, and we hit 200 meter runs of oxidized gold right at surface. And consider Silver Strike to be prospective for both uh, Silver Sand and Carangas styles of mineralization. So what are we doing this year to move these projects forward? Well, Silver Sand, uh, as I alluded to, we're working towards completing our pre-feasibility study, and that's due in the middle of this year. And so for the first time, we'll be able to declare reserves at our Silver Sand project. Very exciting uh, advance for, for that terrific project. And as well, in parallel, we're working towards completing our environmental impact assessment study. And last but not least, there's a little bit of additional ground that's to the southwest of our 100% owned tenements at Silver Sand uh, that's owned by the state-owned mining company, Kami Ball. And so we're working with them to ratify and approve a signed agreement that we, um, that we moved forward a couple of years ago uh, for areas around Silver Sand to really clean up that uh, consolidated land holding at our, at our Silver Sand project. And then at Carangas, as I flagged, we, outlined, uh, we released our resource estimate in September of last year. So we're working towards our PEA study by the middle of this year to, uh, I think, shock some folks as to the, uh, the, the impactful economics of that large scale uh, polymetallic discovery. And then at our Silver Strike project, as you can gather, we've got enough on our plate. So um, at Silver Sand and Carangas, we're pausing our exploration activities uh, at Silver Strike to focus on our, our two main projects. Just a little bit about Bolivia, if you're not familiar with it, you might be asking yourself, how is it that we've been so successful as a company in such a short amount of time finding these world-class systems? And the first point I'd highlight for you is the geology in Bolivia is exceptional. Um, just uh, 40 kilometers away from our flagship silver sand project is the 3 billion ounce Cerro Rico, Cerro Rico silver deposit. It's been operating for almost 500 years. And if you look at the neighboring countries, Chile, Peru, and Argentina, those are world-class mining jurisdictions. So typically Typically, geology doesn't stop at man-made borders. And the other thing that's we've really got going for us in Bolivia is the mining culture. Again, going back to 1545, mining is very much in the DNA of this country. And in 2022, Bolivia was ranked as the sixth largest silver producer globally, and it's responsible for about 20% of the exports. And last but not least, when you combine great geology with a deep mining culture, uh, and the fact that this country has been underexplored over the last 20 years, it's very fertile grounds for a company like New Pacific Metals to come in 
in as a first mover originally back in 2017 and make these two uh, industry shaking discoveries that we've made at both Silver Sand and Karangas. So zooming in a little bit on Silver Sand, these are the key highlights from our PEA study that we released in January of last year. So an open pit uh, configuration, 3.6 to 1 strip ratio, 4 million tons per annum, 107 gram head grade. That's about a 1.3 grams gold on an equivalent basis. We'll recover 91% of that metal to a silver doré bar. So we'll get paid 99% of that content at 2250. That's three and a half billion dollars of life of my net revenue at roughly $10 an ounce, all in sustaining cost. And as I flagged $700 million after-tax net present value and a sub two-year payback on our upfront capital. And that's really driven by, if you look at this production profile, we'll produce roughly 12 million ounces of silver per year at our Silver Sand project. But in each of the first four years, because we get into the guts of this system, it daylights just below surface, we're gonna be producing roughly 16 million ounces per year of silver in each of those first four years. And to put that into context for you, look at a company like Hecla, silver industry giant, their silver production in 2023 is roughly 16 million ounces a year silver. So that's Hecla scale silver production from just one asset at roughly $10 an ounce, all in sustaining costs. I mean, Silver Sand is truly one of the best, as I said, maybe the best primary silver discoveries that's been made anywhere in this planet. Um, and we're now this year focused on upgrading that PEA study into a pre-feasibility study. And so we'll be in a position to declare reserves for the first time on this uh, fantastic asset. And just giving you a quick overview of our second project, Karangas. Uh, it's about a, a, call it a 10 hour drive from our Silver Sand project, also in Bolivia. Fantastic infrastructure. Uh, you can drive from the capital La Paz along a paved national highway. It takes you 35 kilometers from where the project site is and then a beautiful flat gravel road uh, right to site. So the access at Karangas is fantastic and there's a lot of metal there. So this is our uh, inaugural resource estimate that we put out in September. Um, so altogether, 560 million silver equivalent ounces in the indicated category, another 110 million ounces in the inferred. The bulk of the mineralization at Karangas is in this upper silver zone. It's a zone system, but 150 million of the 250 million tons are in that upper silver zone at a silver equivalent grade of about 80 to 85 grams. That's over a gram on a gold equivalent basis, and that's all contained within a pit with a very low strip ratio. And then as you go down through that silver, Silver zone, you get to the, the gold zone at depth where there's about 1.4 million ounces uh, of gold that we've outlined so far in the pit. And just if you step back, I mean, these numbers are, can be a little bit overwhelming, but you know, just through this industry, it's got a, we've got an amazing ability to create value through the drill bit. And if you think about the quantum of those ounces, so 670 million when you, when you combine the two categories, which I know you're not supposed to do, but if you look at these uh, comparables, you know, on average 50 cents an ounce on a silver equivalent basis, pick your number, but I mean, just substantial value that we've created at our Karangas project that we feel we're getting no credit for in our share price and we hope that by the middle of this year when we release our PEA study we'll be able to really daylight some of the value that our geologists have been pounding the table over for the last several years. So uh, look for that PEA study to come out in the middle of the year at Karangas and then we'll have uh, our, our second project um, you know, uh, closing the gap quickly with our, our silver sand as far as advancement. And then just last but not least, Karangas is in a big tenement. It's a 41 square kilometer land holding and we ran this IP survey because the original Karangas discovery was completely blind. It sits under post-mineral cover. And so we ran this updated IP survey in the Greater Basin, which flagged several distinct geophysical anomalies. And if you zoom in, there's one of the anomalies actually perfectly correlates with the mineralized rhyolite intrusion that is, that is our, our massive Karangas discovery. So we think that we're just scratching the surface in a much larger district at Karangas. So you can look for us to uh, get back in and flush out that potential at some point in the future. And then lastly, I'll just give you a, a snapshot of our capitalization table. So not only do we have fantastic assets that we've discovered through the old fashioned Greenfields route, we've also got a tremendous supportive shareholding base. Uh, industry insiders, uh, Silver Corp Metals, they own 27% of us, have been there uh, pre-discovery, as well as Pan American Silver. They own uh, just over 11% of us. And again, have been there early on. Pan American Silver, if you're not aware, they operate in Bolivia. They share our view that it's an 
underappreciated country. Um, and so it, with that backing uh, in September in a very difficult market, we were able to raise 35 million Canadian. And so we're very well funded to continue to push these projects forward and uh, realize value for our shareholders in a very slow but deliberate uh, and disciplined way as we try to bring these massive new sources of silver production online in an in a industry that desperately needs new silver discovery. So with that, um, it's a very quick presentation, but we are at booth uh, 613. If you want to learn more, happy to meet you, but thank you everyone for your time and attention.